So how we can make this application that that we have mandatory to be used within our internal processes and operations and how at some some point when we we are currently also developing our climate change strategy as an institution so how it can become an input for decision making through the use of this of this scope tool so a little bit of the, the context of, in which CAVE operates. So in 2016, CAVE made a commitment to promote the goals of the Paris Agreement that was signed in COP21. Then in 2019, we had a zero carbon declaration made by our governor's assembly, which is the maximum authority for the bank. And in this one, we exclude financing of coal-related projects, and we also commit to promote climate change adaptation and mitigation funding. In 2022, we also made a commitment to the Glasgow Pact to continue with all the commitments from the UNF C agreements. So what is Neutral Bank? This is the name of our software. It's called Neutral Bank because we aspire at some moment to become a neutral bank. That's where it, the name came from. So it's a tool designed to quantify the GSG gases from the fun, projects funded by CAVE. It's based on the AFD carbon footprint tool. So we took some of the inputs from that tool and made a new one. This one has 31 types of projects. So we can run 33, uh, 31, sorry type of projects that goes from solar energy, hydropower, uh, vehicles. Uh, we also have water sanitation projects in there. Uh, we have agriculture. We use some from the, the, the FAO tool, data for that uh, agriculture and forestry types. And it has at this moment more than 4,000 factors and ratios for emissions. So its functions, uh, we're hoping to include them in the changes we're making in our policies and our normative for our internal processes. It's to have an assessment of our ex ante or the absolute emissions that we aim to have with a project. Also, it will help us to estimate how much uh, we can avoid emissions when we compare to a uh, uh, business as usual is an area of, without the project. Estimate also what can be reduced with the project and interact also. It's, it's thought to have a component where our clients or the executive that deals with the client and receives information during the monitoring and implementation phase can fill on the gaps yearly. So we can compare and see and track how the project is doing, if they are complying towards it was designed to, or it's, if some measures can be done from the environmental and social supervision monitoring in a systematic way. And it, it can also generate some interactive reports and charts, like the ones we were shown yesterday with a tool for IDFC. So we also have a dashboard included in our software. So it has a lot of relevance to monitor GSG in CAVE because it can improve our financing decision making at some, at some moment in time, not at this moment, but we're hoping to get that maybe in five years or so when we are really implementing our climate change strategy that it's currently being developed and we hope to have it approved this year or the next one. And it will help us strength our institutional reporting capacity and transparency. And now that it's even more uh, necessary and required by the financial institutions worldwide. And it make us comply with the institutional goals that we have already set within our environmental and social strategy for the five-year-old period that came from 2020 to 2024 that ends this year. And I'm sure we will have another goal for the next one, five-year-old period that we will have to comply and it will help us to do so. 
And it will also strengthen our clients' capacities in terms of climate action and carbon footprint, which in, in Central American region very low at this moment. And it's from the regulatory side, it's only being promoted by Costa Rica at this moment in time, but the other countries have to catch up and this will be some time or uh, something like a capacity strengthening and capacity building for our clients. And at this moment, in these last two years, we have used it to, well, to improve the tool and to make it an, to test for some demo projects. We have estimated as well the contribution of approvals that we have made in 2021 and 2022. It, we have calculated and reported avoided emissions through some projects that we have included in our ESG bonds emissions. And uh, we also share, exchange some results and experiences for the MRB throughout the development of the tool in COP27 in Egypt. So that's it from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, um, now we're moving to a different region. Uh, we're moving to, in, from Latin America, we're moving now to Indonesia. Uh, happy to have you here in the panel, Hani Vijayanti. I hope yes. I pronounced it, pronounce it correct. Yes. Oh, luckily, good. Um, you're a safeguard a specialist at the uh, Environmental Social Evaluation Team in the um, yeah, Technical Division at PTSMI, correct? And yes, and you work here especially pro, um, focusing on renewable energy projects, right? Okay, good. So, um, yeah, looking forward um, to hear from your experience from Indonesia. So, stage is yours. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for introducing, um, introducing me. So, this uh, time I, I want to share an experience about GIG counting implementation at PT Sarana Multi Infrastructure Persero. So, PTSMI is one of special mission vehicle of the Indonesian government. Which, uh, which responsible to accelerate the infrastructure development in Indonesia. So in this uh, business model, PTSMI infrastructure sector uh, from toll road, road until the renewable energy. So we have many sectors to be financed by PTSMI. And then yes, in environment social governance, yes, milestone, we already started at 2016 and then we uh, stimulate every year and in 2023, we have several achievements here. And yeah, we also have a environment social safeguard standard, which uh, every project that financed by PTSMI has to be assessed by this ten, uh, ESS standard. Yeah, this is the my, our division had a, a ESS team. So we are currently have 18 people who are responsible for each project, uh, including the internal expert group. Yeah, uh, this is our sustainability report. Since that, PTSMI provide information to various stakeholders on the implementation of sustainable development. So PTSMI has published a sustainability report since the reporting period in 2017, which includes the calculation of GIG emission from the company operational activities. And then as a PTSMI progressive learning process, the inventory of GIG in year 2023 has been verified in accordance with ISO 14064. And then uh, from that calculation, we disclosed that the emission of total PTSMI produce is 1,910 metric tons of CO2 equivalents. So this is GIG accounting procedure that PTSMI, uh, PTSMI have. And it is currently approved and implemented since April Street uh, uh, 3rd, 2024. So it's very new for PTSMI to just account uh, GSG accounting uh, with the very detailed ways. So in this procedure, it's made a guide and standard for calculating GSG, which is a consists of the first one is organizational boundaries. So we define that PTSMI as a control and then reporting boundaries. So yeah. 
scope one, two, and three, and then GISG, Emission Inventory Best Year Information. We define that the best year information for PTSMI is 2023 because, yeah, at the time, PTSMI has already have a very detailed calculation and also have a GISG accounting procedures here. And the fourth one, GIG emission calculation, data and formulas, and then the last one is GIG emission calculation process. So, this is the process of GIG counting at PTSMI. So, as you see that in the screen, there is four step or four, uh, yeah, four step that uh, we have to complete. The first one is data collection, and then calculation, verification, and the last is submission of calculation data. So ESS team uh, doesn't work uh, itself because we have to coordinate with the other division or with the other department, which is a general affair and procurement division. And then the second one, technological information division. So uh, with the data collection, Yes, as division submit the data requirement to the DTI. Is it uh, is it the technical information division, and then the DUP general uh, general affairs and procurement, and then the UP uh, and DTI submit the data, and move to the second phase uh, calculation. So yes, as division will uh, calculate all the data comes from the the other divisions, and then. We are verified by our team leaders. Also, for the need of a suitable report, we also use the verification uh, process. So, yeah, and then after the verification process done, we have to submission all the calculation data, uh, either internal or external. Yeah, this is the coverage of PT semi emission calculation. So. For the category one, direct GSG emission, emission from company with vehicle, fugitive carbon dioxide from fire extinguishers fuse, and fugitive hydrocarbon from the building acid system. So it is, uh, which is include the direct emission uh, in the left. And then the second one, category two, indirect GSG emission, emission associated with purchase electricity, and then the category three, uh, three indirect GST emission, emission from business travel. Yeah, so we already define all the GST emission uh, yeah, uh, from produced by PTSMI. The GST accounting PTSMI year 2023, as we see in this chart, that the biggest one is come from the emission from the imported electricity. As the our speaker before mentioned that in uh, company building or yeah administrative building it's uh, currently has a highest uh, GIG from the emission from the imported electricity, and then the second one comes from emission from business travel, thirty eight percent, and then the third one comes from direct emission from mobile combustion. So then, and the last one is come from the direct fugitive emission. So this is the calculation. Yeah, yeah we have several working instruction. So actually currently we only have a manual in Excel form for those counting of GIG. This is the first one uh, example working instruction Excel sheet that uh, we have for the first one. Uh, this is form for the counting GSG scope one from using the gasoline or uh, yeah for the gasoline. This is the second example. The form Excel that we use to counting the scope one from using the air conditioner. And this is uh, the also, the example how we use the counting of the scope three, which is the business travel. So it is a model as short until the bus and the uh, unit and then mouse. And yeah, we have emission factors and GWP. And then yeah, we calculated with this methodology. 
this is GSG verification that we already have in the last month uh, by two frontline Indonesia. So there is no uh, finding or matter of findings that uh, they they uh, they search for this um, for this verification. Yeah, the challenge the challenge is from scope three that. Business travel. Uh, actually, PT SMI already have a system or recorded system that including the cities, destination, modes of transportation. But when we have to fill in the form of Excel, uh, Excel form, so we have to fill it in manual. So yeah, it's need a lot of time to be manually fill uh, in the form. And then the second one, indirect emission from employee trips to the office. Actually, PTSMI have difficulty to calculating trips and distance travel. Uh, since that PTSMI still implements the hybrid working arrangement. So yeah, this is also the challenge for us. The third one is indirect emission from visitor and client. Yeah. There is no detailed data on the number of visitors, clients who come to the company office, where they travel from, and what kind of transportation that they use. So this is a uh, kind of uh, our challenges that we have to work on. From scope four, we also face the challenge in emission from liquid solid waste disposal. Since there is no data available to calculate liquid waste and it is very insignificant amounts uh, that we have. The second one is emission from asset use. No data available and suitable methodology for uh, calculation yet. The last is scope five. Indirect emission related to the use of product from the company. Yeah, currently emission from investment of project financed by PT SMI uh, has not been calculated yet due to the unavailability of data. Beside that, that we have currently have a challenge also to make a lot of capability, uh, capability, no capability. Sharing, exper sharing experience or having a lot of learning process to our borrower or our debtors about this GSG accounting. I think this is it for uh, from us uh, for me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we have already seen no like a lot of like um, questions, challenges as well. Um, let's see how CAF is dealing with these challenges. Um, we have even we have um, directly two speakers and two different scopes of the presentations. First, we start with Patricia Rivera. She's Green Operations and Finance Officer at CAF. Her background is, in, as we have heard us yesterday as well, uh, is in Energy Management, Environmental Science, Industrial Engineering as well. And um, I read that you lead the GHG inventory management and monitoring at the um, or at the corporate level. So yeah, very much looking forward to your insights and. Um, Stage is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll go fast because I know we don't have much time. Um, yeah. Actually, we are quite good in time. Yes. So, yeah. Oh, your, 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 your speakers we have very before did a very good job. So. <laughs> okay. I want to give you more time to Kristen. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, I'm here to talk to you about the the GG accounting of the easy sources, like you were saying, the easy ones. Um, in the internal operation of the bank, Christian is going to talk to you about the the emissions in the projects that we finance. Um, but basically, um, in 2009, CAF estimated its emissions since its foundation in 1970. And from 2010 and onwards, uh, it's been measuring and tracking its emissions through direct um, activity data using a, a software or a platform called Green Cloud. So um, we've been having this system through um, a while, some years. And uh, every time that, um, yeah, the, the way that we make sure that the information is reliable is by tracking, you know, that everything is being um, completed in a monthly basis, ideally. And we have different audits throughout the year. Um, just to say the inventory, it's, it's built according to the ISO 14064. 
And, and yeah, once we have the final audit, let's say when everything is completed, then uh, we also add a 5% margin in order to offset our emissions. Um, CAF has the commitment of, of being carbon neutral in this type of uh, sources of emissions. And so we perform a very uh, exhaustive due diligence and, and evaluations uh, in, to make sure that the projects that we choose are aligning to our strategy, to our purpose. You know, for instance, we, we look for projects that are in the region, you know, so we can support the countries in, in the region. Um, some numbers, yeah. Well, we have been offsetting since 2023 around one, 191,000 tons. And the last, last year's um, emissions were around uh, 12,000 tons of CO2, mostly like 80%. Uh, it's it's kind of different from my colleague here, who, who just said you know the um, the main sources of emissions for us in this in in the corporate level or internal level is air travel, and um, well some difficulties have been you know to to really make sure that um, everyone in the organization is aware of its activities and the and the impact that it has on the environment, so we can actually um, make ambitious um, goals in terms of reducing our, of our emissions. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much for providing the overview. Now we, as you said, we go a bit more deep dive. <laughs> Let's, exactly. Yeah, wait a second. <laughs> yes. So again, like we are um, second second intervention from uh, CAF uh, with Christian Grisales. Uh, also, like we have introduced you yesterday as well, or you were introduced by your colleague as well. So again, senior executive, climate action and positive biodiversity management at CAF. Um, he's electrical engineer, so engineering background uh, with a master in renewable energies, and among others, he's also level uh, leading author and technical expert for validations and verifications uh, of GSG emissions projects in regulated and voluntary carbon markets. Yeah, from your expertise, we would like to hear now, like, okay, what is uh, the carbon balance tool all about, and uh, how are you going about it? Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, before starting with the presentation of, we, of the tool we have developed, just some pics of what it implies for CAF to become a green bank in the Latin American and the Caribbean region. Firstly, green bank implies among that uh, mobilized green funding. Because of that, we are accredited entity of the Green Climate Fund, of the Adaptation Fund, and also with a strategy allies like KFW, USTDA, French Agency for Development, mobilizing resources uh, for projects with co-benefits in environment, adaptation, uh, and so on. That's the first part. Also implies to be a bank that works green. That was what my colleague was explaining. Uh, the estimation of the greenhouse gas inventory, the compensation of the carbon footprint, and all the process behind of that. And finally, to be a bank that funds green projects. Uh, how we select those projects, we, we adopted a green taxonomy, and that taxonomy uh, is categorizing the kind of projects of co-benefits included in those projects that can re result in greenhouse gas emission reductions or in climate ad change adaptation or in the promotion, protection of biodiversity. Some examples, renewable energies, energy efficiency, waste management, uh, transport uh, efficiency in the transportation, uh, also controlling of fugitive emissions in the oil and gas sector, and also in natural-based solutions like reforestation and conservation projects like the Red Plus, and well. Uh, our taxonomy uh, not just includes the types of projects uh, with those COP benefits, but also includes uh, requirements of calculation. It isn't just to say this project is green because uh, it's part of the positive list, uh, including the green taxonomy, but also because we can 
calculate the greenhouse gas emission reduction resulting of the implementation of this project along the lifetime uh, of the credit operation of the assets uh, of the project. Uh, that calculation is based on the UNFCCC guidelines. Basically, we establish the baseline scenario for the project. Basically, what are the emissions uh, with, in the absence of the project activity and the project scenario, including uh, the construction and operation uh, emissions resulting of the, of the implementation of the project. And we say that the carbon balance of that uh, credit operation is positive if the project emissions are lower than the baseline emissions. That's basically we have emission reductions uh, because of the implementation of the project or the carbon balance is negative when the project emissions are higher than the baseline emissions. This also happens, um, for example, in roads uh, because of the characteristics of the Ameri Latin American, the Caribbean, we, con we invest in roads and maybe you know that uh, when we are funding roads, we have something that's called the rebound effect because of the induced traffic. In that case, for example, we have a project emissions higher than the emission reductions in spite of we implement along with the road, bicycle lanes, renewable energies, uh, efficient lighting, and so on. So we are aware and we are transparent in informing to our stakeholders that also we have uh, active projects funded with negative uh, carbon balance. Uh, this is, these are some visuals of the tool we have developed. Um, you can see the, the main page of the, of the tool with, the, with its name, Carbon Balance Tool, some of the projects that have been evaluated using the tool. Um, you have to include some general information, basically uh, who is performing the calculation, what's the name of the project, where it's located, what is the component of that credit operation implying greenhouse gas emission reduction, greenhouse gas, greenhouse gas emission reduction or removal, uh, what is the component that is supporting uh, adaptation, promotion or protection of the biodiversity. And later, we start with the inclusion of the activity data for the construction of the baseline. Those baseline scenarios are based mainly in the guidelines of UNFCCC, basically the booklet of methodologies of UNFCCC. Of course, tropicalized, uh, not including uh, elements like additionality and so on, but including the elements necessary for the establishment of the baseline. So using those formula, uh, we request to our clients the activity data for this particular example, uh, fossil fuel consumption, um, sorry, can, uh, where are the materials uh, necessary during the construction, solar panels, transformer, uh, cables, pipelines, and so on. We include those uh, activity data into the, into the tool and we calculate the greenhouse gas emissions in the baseline scenario. And later, we pass to the construction of the project scenario in two, in two parts, the construction phase and the operation phase during the, for the project scenario, sorry. Also asking for the activity data required, trying to be a, as most complete as we can because we know if we have much more information, the accuracy of the establishment of the project scenario will be better. So uh, before starting with the operation, even during the pre-origination, we inform to our clients about we are going to request this information, if maybe it's required any additional uh, resource for studies, pre-feasibility pre -pre -feasibility and so on, in order to get this information at the time of the evaluation. And we finally have the balanced carbon uh, for the operation, basically subtracting the project emissions from the baseline emissions, uh, allocating them depending the scope, scope one, scope two, scope two, scope three, and the final carbon balance uh, uh, allocated to each of the greenhouse gas emission sources. And the tool informs What's the baseline emissions uh, for one year for the total duration of the project operation of the lifetime of the asset funded, the emission reduction achieved by the, by the component of that project credit operation, 
and also includes the abatement costs uh, for its reduce or remove uh, greenhouse gas uh, emission. And some visuals of the information also delivered by the tool, graphics of the greenhouse gas emissions during the construction phase, greenhouse gas emissions during the operation, uh, and so on. And the final carbon balance, what we have at the beginning of the operation, the years of the construction, uh, basically greenhouse gas emissions, but later greenhouse gas emission reductions. And those greenhouse gas emission reductions are the ones informed by the bank as the climate action impact resulting from the funds to each of the components participating in that credit operation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Perfectly on time. Good job. Thank you so much. Um, so we have in the open now the, the floor for your questions. I saw a lot of you have written down a lot of notes. So yeah, looking forward to your questions. Who wants to address any questions of the five panelists? Yes, Francesca, we start here. Do you have a microphone? Yes, you maybe can. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Uh, it was a really uh, fruitful uh, discussion. Uh, I will have many questions, but uh, in the interest of time, I will just select one. Um, two of you, um, one from uh, Carbo and um, uh, the guys from CAF mentioned uh, carbon markets and uh, carbon credits. Um, so the question is, when it comes to GHG accounting and carbon credits, uh, what's your approach um, dealing with those projects that are actually selling carbon credits? Do you deduct uh, the GAG emissions claimed by these projects from your um, emissions reduction claims? Or do you allow them to be sold while you are in the investments or in the funding um, during the implementation? Um, so and that's the first part of the question. Second part of the question is the same, but on the opposite side, how do you treat the carbon credits when you are actually buying them as an institution? So that's, that's my question, thanks. Maybe we start with Evelyn, and because I think it was Kabe and Kaf, right? No. Carbo? Carbo, ah, Carbo sorry. And Juan, that, okay. But in the middle, okay. Yeah, well, I understand this is, more, this is more a question for financial institutions, because, yeah, because we are carbon developers. So, of course, we, if, we, if we add up everything we develop, over now 20 million em, 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 emission reductions in the, in the last five years, but, but this is a different question. I think uh, it goes more for CAF or for your institution in Central America. Okay, maybe I can start giving the CAPS approach in terms of offsetting the emissions of its internal operations. I mean, this is a process that we know it's, um, we have to treat very carefully, you know, to make sure that we actually get most, all of the information we can find about the projects. Uh, like I was saying, uh, we perform a due diligence in order to, you know, um, uh, find any positive or negative, you know, feedback that, you know, in the, in, in the web or everywhere, and especially for projects that might be controversial, uh, because this is we know this is something that uh, can you know have an effect in our reputation. So that's why we also make sure that it it aligns with the strategy uh, of the organization. You know, what are we? really supporting in terms of sustainable development. And once uh, we choose a project, and we of course um, do all the administrative stuff, we make sure to have the certificates, you know, that everything is well, um, it's very transparent, you know, for our stakeholders to, to see, you know, that we actually bought those credits and what they represent. And, and yeah, that will be from the internal side. I don't know if Christian wants yes, to add something. Um, the assessment uh, that we perform to the potential greenhouse gas emission reductions uh, certified we are going to use for the compensation is, is very comprehensive. Um, we have defined some criteria 
uh, location of the project, kind of the project, uh, co-benefits additional to the greenhouse gas emission reduction, any controversy behind uh, of the project, uh, scope, and so on. And we finally decide what will be the best option that from the compensation of the internal carbon footprint. Externally, uh, we haven't started with the compensation strategy. Until now, what we are doing is enabling conditions in our clients uh, to include uh, in the components of the credit operation that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, it's a road. We know uh, we'll increase emissions in the project scenario. Okay, but you can include renewable, renewable energies, waste management, uh, energy efficiency, and so on. And later, the idea is also offered to our clients it can be at the beginning a non-reimbursable technical cooperation to compensate the carbon footprint, but we were waiting for an international standard. That's ISO 14068. Before we didn't feel comfortable with the approach followed by the companies because it was the PAS 2060 voluntary with some gaps in our understanding now with the ISO 14068, we consider that now we can boost the carbon neutrality into our operations and maybe also participate in projects that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We are participating in, in she says, what's the name of the kind of operation, in funds. Uh, investing in greenhouse gas emission reduction projects, for example, uh, reforestation, uh, energy, uh, renewable energy generation. And as part of that participation, we use those, our idea is use those carbon credits to compensate the greenhouse gas emission of our credit operations. Of course, providing the client with the funds and with the projects to by themselves compensate the carbon footprint. And that's more or less the idea, of course, always looking for carbon credits uh, coming from recognized greenhouse gas programs and with the, with the most uh, co-benefits additional to the greenhouse gas emission reduction. Okay, thank you. Looking around, any other question? I think there, there should be definitely quite a few. Yes, please, over there. Uh, thank you very much for that presentation, wonderful. Um, the, the question I had was a very simple one. Your tool, does it come only in Spanish, Portuguese language, or does it come in other languages as well? English? That's for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for, for you. Yeah, yeah. And you mean the, the tool, the yeah, platform? Yeah, yeah. Well, up to today, uh, it's in Spanish, but okay. in the upcoming months, it will be in Portuguese and in English. Okay, good. Yes. Thank you. And I forgot to mention that this is a tool, of course, property of CAF, but the idea is to allow the use of this uh, tool to any, well, a stakeholder of the, of the bank. Uh, IDFC members. There we go. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. Any other question? You're looking around from the audience to the panelists. You can think a bit about, like, the, make, make use of the opportunity at the moment that, that they're here. Um, so we have maybe a question um, to Hani, because, like, no, you were mentioning at the end, like, oh, you, you still have a lot of challenges, for example, right? So I think you mentioned uh, quite a few. Um, what would you wish or what you do, what would you need like have you did an assessment like to what you would need in order to to cope with these challenges um, because I think similar similar challenges are also um, happening in other banks as well so maybe um, we start here and then I would t take the word and with someone else yeah thank you so uh, the first and the prioritize of our challenge is uh, about the to integrate all the data in the system. Because as I mentioned before that, all the uh, calculation done by the manual with the Excel work, uh, Excel, and then, uh, yeah, we also have to make a lot of capacity building to our borrower or our debtors since that the, our, the awareness of the GSG counting in uh, several sectors in Indonesia is, uh, quite low, so it's kind of like our challenges for VTSMI to have 
lot of capacity building, a lot of learning process from four to our debtors or our borrowers because it is very important for us to also uh, calculate about the project as the CAF uh, mentioned and it's very uh, challenging because some, uh, are ac actually PTSMA also finance the project for the local governments. So yeah, it's kind of very challenging for PTS. I mean, how we can uh, give a capacity building about this kind of GAG counting, since that uh, there are lack of uh, this knowledge also. And yeah, this kind of so new for the local governments, it's different with the big companies. For example, several companies already aware about the GAG, and we also have uh, their data, and then they also have an awareness to also have a public uh, GIG counting publicly, so it is very easier for PTSMI to have it. So, But it's very uh, in small portion of uh, our borrower or the, our debtors. Thank you. So wouldn't it be a possibility, you said, like, because now you're doing a lot of things manually. We have now heard about three different tools. Yeah. Uh, we have one over there, IDFC. We have the uh, Kave tool software. We have the um, uh, Kaft software, software as well, which you just have presented. I think there are a lot of opportunities no, to, to connect. But um, yes, Mustafa, yes, you course. wanted to say something. Yeah, yes, of course. Ju yeah, just to add also the, the IFD carbon tool, which is also used as basis for the, these two tools that were presented. Uh, no, I, I think that's what uh, my, my question here is to, to all the, uh, the, the colleagues about how the process of uh, evaluating the, the carbon, uh, the, the GHA accounting um, uh, is done with the clients, in fact, with the customer, your partner, uh, and uh, uh, how this process, are you involving the, the, the clients in the, pr the process and also um, since these calculations are made ex ante, do you have any ex post uh, validation or contrafactual uh, validation of the information that you have to increase your uh, maybe your knowledge about the, the sectors and so on? So the question about first during the ex ante calculation and after that during uh, ex post. Before we answer, there's a direct. Add if on. I could just complete take the, one more. you know one of you know just his question. Does the outcome of the measurement have an impact on the decision-making process validating or financing a project? Great addition. I would say we start with Evelyn this time. Okay, thank you. Good questions. That's what I was mentioning, that we have developed the software and it's, uh, it's functioning, but we haven't put it in function yet because <laughs> our normative, it's still trying to... Uh, to close the gaps so we can apply it properly. So for the ex post evaluation, we use it for the re impact report of ESG bonds, so where we have a renewable energy project. So we fill in with information that comes from the supervision reports on how much electricity was produced. And then we introduce the, the activity data on the tool. And then we have the, the final result of how many tons of carbon dioxide were avoided with the project. And so that answers the, the first question of Mustafa. And the second one, I mentioned in my presentation that we are working on our climate change strategy, uh, so the institutional one. So we have a goal there that from in, in, before 2029, we will have a, redu a reductions goal a target for reducing our emissions from the for portfolio. So that one will come after we have been implementing and the functionality of neutral bank in our operations and we can come with a target that it's feasible and that's doable, right? <laughs> But that will come after we know how much are we emitting or avoiding from our portfolio investments. And it's kind of a tricky uh, thing to do because we were uh, learning yesterday that for financial institutions, the scope three is the biggest source of emissions through the investments you make. And this tool, it's uh, functional, it is functionality, it's for projects. 
but we also have programs that are kind of tricky because then you have many projects in there and sometimes when you are are on the ex ante stage you have not clarity of all the projects that can come in so it's very difficult to have the GSG accounting for that type of financial instruments and also when you have intermediary financial institutions working on when you have a credit line so we haven't figured that part yet <laughs> so it's it's very interesting to be sharing here with you experiences and knowledges from your side, so how much, and to learn how the IDFC uh, carbon tool can include something about uh, credit lines and for some other financial instruments, how can we calculate GHG emissions? Because at this moment we have only figured out on the project side, but still we have to put it into our internal processes so we can fill in the information. And was I was actually taking notes on how in this process we are in at this stage, we should have something in there for the environmental and social supervision and also for the technical supervision to have that input annually from the clients with all the information so we can because the, the, the software does the, the thing, but we have to put in the input and how we can collect that input from the client. And so we have to put that in the, our policies so we can start applying it. Colleagues from the CAF, Christian, you want to yes, respond to this? Yes, because thank I think you. Also directed, yeah. I was preparing the, the response. Um, of course, the idea is involved along the process to the client because the, the activity data uh, belong to the client. Uh, it's quite complex at the beginning because the client is thinking much more in the credit operation as a credit operation, not like a climate action operation, let's say. So we, we use them to use uh, facilities we have non-reimbursable uh, uh, technical non-reimbursable technical cooperation for the preparation of studies uh, hiring consultants maybe making the estimation of what could be the expected greenhouse gas emission reduction by the project and during the administration the idea is make follow up to those results to confirm that effectively that those elements uh, resulting in climate action are working properly, are real, are real and are close, or if we have to update those um, results in our internal figures, let's say a percentage of green funding provided by the bank, if we have to do them, because we, also are, we, we are also aware that it implies a, a, the construction of internal capacity that will take will take time and also uh, make aware the client that uh, before just environmental and social safeguards uh, were the law, now the client also has to include climate action uh, resulting of the credit operation. So that's the idea. Um, of course, we have to talk with them, explain them. We also have an internal uh, goal of a, a green funding 40% and we have to get uh, achieve that uh, goal and because of that we are working very hard making awareness in, in, in our clients creating the, the tool and also providing additional uh, resources non-reimbursable uh, non, uh, te uh, te non technical uh, cooperation grants yes for them to prepare those studies and allow us to make the calculations Okay, good. I have a very, very last question. If not, if there's no other question here in the audience. Ah, yes, please. Yes, please, go ahead. Please, um, the microphone is over there. Uh, are there any KPIs for underwriting division uh, for calculating a loss given default, uh, probability of default, and the pricing? Do you want to direct this question to anyone, or anyone wants to <laughs> respond to this question? Who wouldn't? No? <laughs> Wasn't clear enough if you can. Uh, underwrite, underwriting division needs some information, KPIs, for uh, defining uh, pricing uh, for new loan. 
and one, what kind of information uh, they need for, uh, let's say, uh, results of uh, tools. Oh, you mean the KPIs for the impact reporting on the bonds? No, uh, let's say on the project level for new exposures. Greenhouse gas emission reductions achieved by the project. That's uh, are, the KPI. Yes. Uh, are there combining uh, physical climate risk with this kind of risk, uh, GAG emission? Hmm. <laughs> I think it depends on the project. If it is an, a project that also has an adaptation component, you can add a beneficiaries like communities that were removed from high risk locations or vulnerabilities to climate change. And we do that, but through another tool that the bank has, which is our system for impact evaluation. So we also measure uh, another kind of KPIs, not just tons of CO2, but also like beneficiaries, like uh, renewable energies installed capacities in, in gigawatts or megawatts. And we, we have a track of it at an ex ante phase and an ex post phase, but that's through another tool, not a GHG calculation tool. Yes, uh, it's also important to mention that to consider a credit operation as green, not just implies greenhouse gas emission reduction, it means mitigation, but also adaptation, and in our case, uh, protection and promotion of biodiversity. So the taxonomy we, we are following, uh, quantitative, quantitatively uh, required to us to estimate the greenhouse gas emission reduction, but qualitative also implies to evaluate the co-benefits uh, resulting from the project adaptation and protection and promotion of biodiversity. And those topics, the experts, they know there are several KPIs to evaluate that. But also ensuring that any of the environmental impacts resulting from the operation will significantly affect one of the benefits. The, 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 the case always discusses a road. Of course, it promotes uh, connection, development of the region, but it has greenhouse gas emission reductions. Okay, let's evaluate if the greenhouse gas emissions, sorry, if the greenhouse gas emissions because of the induced traffic are affecting other of the components, adaptation, uh, biodiversity, and so on. And the final assessment uh, give us the, the decision of if we consider of not or not a green funding, the, the credit operation. All right. Thank you so much. I think looking also at the time, and we don't so don't want to to um, uh, to to steal time of your uh, well deserved um, lunch break. I would like to really thank you, everyone, um, for, uh, on the the, uh, the whole panel, the five of you. I think it's very, we we notice it's very important um, that we make make uh, the next steps in the carbon ac and carbon accounting. We have to learn from each other, as we have just uh, seen. We have all challenges. I think all institutions have still challenges because a lot, there's quite um, some of uncertainty. So the exchanging this experience, I think, is, is a very crucial step forward. Um, for example, no, to getting the right data to cope with uncertainty as well, and and to cope with proxies, etc. So, thank you very much uh, for the whole panelist, for all panelists, uh, for sharing your experience, your insights, and um, I think now we are going again as yesterday to the lunch to the same venue. Um, I think um, our colleagues Anna Maria is already there with the sign, um, so please follow her, um, and then we meet here again at I think 1:30, right? 1:30, and then we will con continue with some practical application. Thank you so much.